This might be the most interesting and unique lens we see released this year. This is a lens that they're calling the Soap Bubble Bokeh Lens. And that's for its very unique specular highlights when you're shooting a subject and you have some lights in the background and they are part of the bokeh or out of focus areas. You get this very interesting effect where they look like highlighted soap bubbles. This is something we've seen with some historic lenses in the past, but none of the modern lenses that I know of give you this sort of style specular highlights or bokeh. Now this is a 100 millimeter f2.8 lens. And there's a couple of other really unique qualities about this lens. To start with, it is an M42 screw mount lens. Now, M42 screw mount comes from the 1940s. That's when it was first released. And I don't know of anyone releasing an M42 screw mount lens in many, many years, at least not that I have heard of. Now, the way you use this lens on your modern mirrorless camera is you can adapt it to use it on any modern mirrorless camera system. I've got M42 screw mount adapters for Sony, Panasonic, and Canon at this stage. And I've used this lens on all of those cameras. And one advantage of the fact that it has been released as this M42 screw mount that you use an adapter to use on any of those systems is if you are shooting in more than one camera system, you can use that lens on any of those cameras. In addition to that, if you're interested in trying your hand at photography, which involves film, like film photography, Here's an M42 screw mount camera, which I picked up on eBay. I think this body was about $20 because most people buy the lenses to adapt to their modern mirrorless cameras. And then they just, the bodies, they have no use for them. So you can get these bodies probably for as cheap as $20. And this M42 screw mount lens is going to work on this film camera natively and allow you to go out and shoot film with an old camera and a modern lens, which is flipping on its head completely what we're mostly seeing, which is people adapting vintage lenses to modern cameras. But it is a cool extra function you get because it's an M42 screw mount lens. Now, the next thing that's unique about this lens is it only has three glass elements in the lens. Now, this is an optical formula. Three element lenses probably date back to the 1930s. They were very popular probably between the 1940s and 1960s, but I have not seen a new three element lens released in many, many years, maybe decades, I'm not sure, unless they were some sort of reproduction of an old vintage lens. So a three element lens is a very, very unique design. And just to give you a reference of how unique this is, a modern zoom lens can have up to 20 glass elements in it. Any modern prime or fixed lens, similar to what this 100 millimeter f2.8 is, can have up to 15 elements. So now we've got three elements of glass rather than 15 elements of glass. So this is a massive, massive difference. And it creates some challenges in using this lens. It also creates some challenges for me to evaluate this lens. Now, importantly, this is a budget lens. I don't know the exact pricing yet, but it's gonna be sort of under $200, might be sort of in the $150 range. I will put some links in the description down below once I have firm pricing, because at the time of shooting this video, I do not have all those details. Now, when you pick up the lens, the first thing that you are gonna notice is that it has a very similar build quality to many other TT Artisan lenses out there if you've owned a TT Artisan lens in the past. It is an all metal build. It comes with a metal lens mount. It has a very nice, satisfying clicked aperture ring. The aperture ring is metal and the focus ring is really smooth and it's also metal. I really like these lenses that are all metal and the focus and aperture rings have a textured metal exterior to sort of give you a bit of grip rather than the rubber that we're seeing on a lot of modern lenses. Because I find my Sigma lenses, some of them after six or seven years, that rubber is kind of starting to deteriorate and sort of not great. So the idea of a completely metal lens where there's no rubber to deteriorate, I think is kind of really nice and it's something that I prefer. Now, as I said, this is a screw mount lens. And just to give you an idea how that works, I've got a screw mount adapter here on this little Sony camera. And all I do is I put this screw mount adapter on first and then I take the lens and I screw it onto the lens mount. If I can line it up properly without cross threading it. I'm gonna make a mess of this. Ah, there we go. 
And what you'll find is it lines up perfectly so you got your numbers at the top. And once again, if I wanna use this on the film camera, all I gotta do is take the little cap off and that will screw straight on the film camera as well. And really, everything about the lens overall feels extremely premium, way above what I believe will be the suggested price point. And for only having three glass elements in it, it is reasonably hefty. It, it does feel like it's got a bit of weight to it. It is really a nice feeling and well-built lens. All of this doesn't matter unless we get some good image quality. And when it comes to evaluating the image quality, it is kind of hard for me to really compare this to modern lenses because it is so absolutely unique, but I'm gonna try to give you some idea of what you're gonna get if you get this lens. To start with, I found this lens somewhat challenging to get the best results from, and the thing that really clicked it in and made this lens work for me is once I stopped shooting it at f2.8 and I started stopping it down just its first click, which I think is f3.5 or 3.4, something like that. With a simple three element lens design that this lens is, it has similar image characteristic flaws that vintage three element lenses have. And that is those lenses when they're wide open, and at this case at f2.8, you're gonna get some chromatic aberration, you're gonna get some flaring issues, and often you're going to get some lack of detail and sharpness when you compare it to more modern lenses. What I found was stopping down to that f3.5 dramatically improved all those image character flaws. But importantly, I still maintained that amazing background blur and bokeh. And I think that is the important thing about this lens. Once you stop it down to that f3.5, 3.4, and you use it the way that it should be used, and you learn how to use it, you get these images that are just incredible. Like honestly, I don't think I've ever produced photos that really looked anything like this. This soap bubble bokeh effect is absolutely true and pretty incredible. And I think this lens is particularly appealing for people that are interested in portrait photography, particularly that sort of candid on the street, in the wild, particularly in a city type photography, because that's gonna allow you to get that sort of all the buildings and all the background blur and really get those specular highlights and that soap bubble bokeh effect really strong. And I think that's where this lens shines. I think if you are in a situation where you have an environment where you can capture those kind of images, then I think this lens is a fair bit less attractive to me. Now, beyond just the portrait use, I must admit, as you stop it down, if you get to f5.6 or f8, you do get quite a sharp image that looks a lot more like a modern lens. And in fact, recently I went to a World Cup match, and the World Cup here in Australia in 2023 has this very interesting restriction where you can't bring a lens in that's more than 10 centimeters long, which was kind of challenging for me because almost all lenses are more than 10 centimeters long. So I took this lens off of its adapter to make sure it stayed under the 10 centimeters. And I was able to take it to this World Cup match and I shot footage at f8 and it just worked like a moderate telephoto lens. And the sharpness and detail was really, I would say just about as good as any modern zoom lens I've had. So I think I was super impressed with how much sharpness and detail you could get out of the lens if you did stop it down to F8, which I did, and I thought the images were really, really good. So you can't discount this lens even at F5.6 and an F8 as a moderate telephoto lens with plenty of sharpness, detail, and good contrast as well. So ultimately I have to ask, who is this lens for? Well, I think it's actually a lens for creating unique art, particularly portraiture, and I think the people that I would recommend this for are certainly people that are not pixel peepers, but people that want something that is completely unique, people who like to shoot at night, people who like the look of that soap bubble bokeh specular highlights. I think this is going to give you some unique images that are really gonna make your friends and family and everybody say, wow, and you're gonna be able to do it on a reasonable budget but you are not getting a modern clinical look out of this lens. So it's very important to keep that in mind. And as I said, I would definitely shoot this thing at f3.4, starting at f3.4, and I wouldn't even touch that f2.8. Now, if you're interested in some more ultra low budget lenses that give you incredible image quality, I've just thrown a video on screen now. This is really one of the things I specialize on this channel. And in this video, you'll find 10 lenses, some of them as cheap as $20, that are absolutely stunning. 